Hey everybody, it's Ari here. So today I'm going to be doing a Q&A where I answer all the questions that you guys have asked me over the last month or so. I'm doing a Q&A like this once a month. And so these are all the questions that I have gotten between last month's Q&A and this month. Before I jump in, I want to thank all of the members on this channel who have made everything possible. If you would like to become a member, it's similar to like a Patreon. Uh, you just don't have to go to another website to do it. You get your own little perks. It's $2 a month, and I'm actually going to be doing another tier soon. I haven't exactly decided what is going to be involved in that tier quite yet. Originally, I was going to do a Discord, but um, it seems like that may not be what the community wants. So if you are a member or you would like to become a member, let me know what you would want as a member perk for maybe five dollars a month and we'll see what we can do there also please remember i have a website sarahsnakeshop.com where i have corn snakes and corn snake accessories i have a few corn snakes left over from last year and breeding season has officially started here for this year so uh be looking forward to even more snakes to be available on there but i also have t-shirts masks as well as books that i have written on corn snake morphs I'm going to go ahead and jump into the questions here. Uh, so the first question that we have is, uh, if the eggs in a clutch are stuck together, should I separate them or just leave them be? And um, this is kind of a, you're gonna get a mixed answers with this, but I would say generally speaking, it's best to leave them together. There is some evidence that the embryos within the eggs can kind of communicate with each other in a way when they are stuck together. But if you separate them, they lose that communication and that can cause them to be a little bit more nervous as babies. It can maybe cause them to hatch at a different time from the rest of the clutch. And I have heard that sometimes it can cause them to not be as good of feeders. Uh, I don't have uh, solid evidence of these things, but I have heard this in the past. So generally speaking, I would say it is better to just leave them together unless there is something that is preventing you from being able to do that. For example, if the humidity is really, really low on the top and you can't seem to get the eggs from uh, collapsing in or sinking in because there's not enough humidity, then you might want to move some of those eggs from the top down into where it's more humid so that they don't like shrink up and dry up like that. But otherwise, I would definitely say try to keep them together as much as possible. The next question is, I have an annery and a snow, which are both females. I was thinking about getting either an ice or a cinder male. Uh, if we got a cinder, does that mean we could get peppermint? And the answer, short answer, is not necessarily. Um, both of your females would have to also carry the cinder mutation and the cinder would also have to carry the amelanistic mutation. And so getting those to all mix together for 100% sure, it's, it's best to just go with what you know you can get. So if you are looking to get peppermints, it's best to get a peppermint and you can incorporate your, your females that you currently have into that project later on if you want to in order to eventually get more peppermints, but it will take a couple of generations. The next question is, what size of tubs do I use for my adult snakes? It depends on the size of the adult snakes. Um, if they are males, normally my males are going to be smaller just because uh, the females need more bulk on them in order to safely breed and lay eggs. So I give them more food than I give the males. My males are usually going to be in about 26 quart tubs that are like the underbed tubs. They're, you know, maybe that, that thick or like that tall. And then they're about two feet wide and three feet long, give or take. And then the females will have slightly larger enclosures if they're big enough. I will give them more like the 42 uh, port tubs because those are going to be about twice the length of, of the ones that the males will be in. The next question, um, I'm from another country. Can I somehow buy your books online, like in a PDF? P.S. Love your videos. Thank you very much. Um, and the answer is yes. So sarahsnakeshop.com is my website. You can uh, purchase the eBooks there and you will be emailed a link um, automatically once you purchase where you can click the link to download the PDFs of the books. That's going to be uh, right now. That's the only way that those books are for sale. I don't have the physical copies of the books right now. Uh, so if you want a PDF, that's the best way to do it. 
Um, next question, can I breed a corn snake with a Florida king snake? Technically, the answer is yes. Um, I've made videos in the past about how corn snakes can hybridize with just about any other colubrid species. Not any other, but many, many other ones. Uh, however, it's not as simple as just putting two of them together and they're going to breed. Um, I have actually not gone out of my way to breed hybrids, but uh, from the hybrid breeders that I do know, they say it's best to get a pair of each of the species that you want to hybridize together so if you are trying to breed a king snake with a corn snake it's best to have a pair of king snakes and a pair of corn snakes and then um what they will do is actually put the uh, male king snake in a like a pillowcase or something like that and then put the female corn snake also in a bag but and then put them in a tub with the female king snake and male corn snake it is best to have a male corn snake to do this breeding because male king snakes have uh, barbs on their peens that can actually hurt the female corns so it's kind of best to do the male corn snake female king snake thing um, at least this is just what I've heard again this is not directly from the source this is like from another source so uh, kind of just take it uh, as much of a grain of salt as you think might be appropriate uh, but the reason that you do this is because they have different pheromones that they will put off and the male corn snake may not react to the female king snake's pheromones and vice versa. So you want to have an ovulating female corn snake and an ovulating female king snake and then have the male counterparts in the vicinity as well so that they can pick up on each other's pheromones for that breeding to occur. The next question is, are there any morphs that have been wild caught? And the answer is yes. Palmetto was wild caught. Uh, there have been hypomelanistics found in the wild. Uh, the original charcoals were wild caught. There have also been anerythristics caught in the wild. Uh, and I believe that m the first amelanistic may have also been caught in the wild. I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, there are definitely morphs that are caught in the wild. Um, the first scaleless corn snake was not found in the wild. However, there have been scaleless forms of other species found in the wild. I believe that I saw a garter snake, a scaleless garter snake caught in the wild a couple of years ago. Not a corn snake fact, but still really interesting. You can kind of find just about any mutation in the wild depending on what the species is. And it's not species dependent. Mutations like this are really random and sometimes people just happen to find them and then sometimes they don't. The next question is, what is a corn snake's general habitat? Like what is the area that they normally live in? And the general area, I'll put up a map over here to kind of show you. Um, they kind of go as far west as Mississippi. And then um, if you kind of make an arch all the way from Mississippi up over uh, Kentucky and then sort of going over to the east coast uh, and then they're all the way south, that's mostly their habitat. You're not going to find them any further north than Kentucky. In fact, they're actually really uncommon in Kentucky, but they are found there. So I thought I would at least mention it. It's going to be more uh, common for you to see them in uh, lower Tennessee and then even more south than that but they can extend up into Kentucky in that area so you can kind of get an idea of their location by that. Uh, what other species do I personally have is one of the questions I got and uh, right now I really only have one other species besides corn snakes and that is my desert king snake. His name is Dexter. Uh, he is kind of my garbage disposal. He will eat anything that is not eaten by the corn snakes or uh, as a breeder sometimes we uh, hatch things that maybe have deformities or are not going to live a healthy life and so um, it is it is the best thing for us to do uh, to kind of give that up to the circle of life and um, they will be food for the king snake. It's not something I really like to talk about in depth but um, I had kind of gone back and forth for a long time about having a king snake and um, I just decided that that was going to be the best way for um, my collection to go when it came to kinked snakes or anything like that that might happen. Um, is it normal for corn snakes to spend time in the water? And the answer to that is technically no. Um, corn snakes will sometimes spend time in the water, but that's usually because there's something wrong. So the most common reason for this is if the snake has mites, um, or I guess I should say that's one of the most common signs of having mites is if the snake is spending a lot of time in their water bowl. So if your snake is spending a lot of time in the water bowl, definitely look them over for mites. They're usually just little black dots sometimes 
sometimes they're really hard to see. Um, I would definitely check out online pictures and signs of mites. But there's other reasons. If the humidity is too low, maybe the snake is getting ready to shed, they will go to their water bowl and spend time in the water in order to get that humidity that they need. Or it could be that the enclosure is too hot for the snake and they need that area to cool down. The next question is, what's the difference between a corn snake and a red rat snake? And the answer is there isn't a difference. A corn snake is a sort of more layman's term for the red rat snake. There are a lot of different types of rat snakes. There's the black rat snake, Texas rat snake, Great Plains rat snake, yellow rat snake, white oak rat snake. There's a lot of different types of rat snakes out there. Corn snakes were originally just called the red rat snake, but the corn snake is kind of the nickname for the red rat snake. So they are technically the same thing. Um, there's also a, another question about um, corn snakes versus rat snakes. So what's the difference between black corn snakes and black rat snakes? So black rat snakes are a completely different species of rat snakes and black corn snakes are just a morph of corn snakes. We don't really use the term black anymore, but if we do use it, it's to describe the anorethristic type, usually anorethristic type A, uh, which is just short for, or anery for short, A-N-E-R-Y. And that just means that there are no reds on the snake and there are very little yellows. I've done a lot of videos on anery in the past so I'll link some of these videos up above for you guys if you would like to go check them out but the short answer is black rat snakes are a completely different species and black corn snakes are just a morph of corn snake that kind of look like black rat snakes uh, the next question was, do I sell online or at expos or anywhere else? I do not sell in expos. I don't really like expos that much because there's so many different opportunities for, um, say, mites to be moved from one snake to another or any other diseases. Um, it's very stressful on the animals to, uh, you know, they don't get any food or water while they're being traveled. They are just in these little cups while they're being traveled and it's, it's just very stressful on them, and it's also a lot of hassle for me as the breeder to have to pack them up, and I keep very, very um, specific feeding records and everything for my snakes, and so if I have a handful of normals and I'm putting them all in cups to take to an expo, how am I going to know which one is which when I get them back? I have to then mark all of the, uh, all of the like little cups with the snake's number, which is a thing that you can do, but it's just way more than... I, way more effort than I want to put in. It's not worth it for me personally. However, there are a lot of people who do go to expos and they do have a lot of success there. So I'm not like dissing anyone who does go to expos. Expos can be great. They're just not what I would personally do or what I do like to do. And the last question that I have here is, when, what is the rule of threes? Uh, someone in a Q&A brought this up to me, and so I thought I would mention it here, especially for anyone who is an aspiring breeder. Uh, so the rule of threes with corn snakes is this is when to breed a female corn snake when she's three years old three feet long and 300 grams that is the rule of threes for a female for the males you can kind of say rule of twos uh two feet long two years old 200 grams um it's not like as as a set in stone for males but with females it's definitely important to make sure that they have that extra weight on them and that extra length and that they are certainly perfectly healthy to lay those eggs because it can really take a lot out of them and it actually does like um, they lose some of their own original body weight when laying eggs and you don't want them to lose too much of that weight so it's just uh, the rule of threes is just 300 grams three years three feet long to breed a female corn snake. I hope that this video helped you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask me for a future Q&A, please leave them in the comments below. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video soon.